Hello and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and on this week's episode, with breeding season around the corner, I'm joined by Derry Patrick Farm Manager Michael McManus to get an update on how calving went, the plan for AI ahead and what sires are being selected. Michael, you're very welcome. You had a busy spring. How did calving go? Calving went generally well this year. We started on the 2nd of February and finished on the 22nd of April. So very similar in terms in, in terms of time and to other years. Um, we had 102 cows calved and we had 100 live calves. Uh, we had one set of twins and three mortalities. The three mortalities um, were there was one calf born with a twisted gut and we were advised by the vet to put him down and the other two calves were born dead with large volumes of fluids in their stomach. Um, the large, um, the average calf birth weight this year was 45 and a half kilos um, with an average, uh, average birth date of the 2nd of March overall. Uh, we had 89 cows and calves cows ca- cows and heifers I should say calved in the first six weeks so overall it was an, an, just over an 11 week calving season um, and we got the first 30 cows and calves out to grass on the 2nd of March uh, so it was very similar to last year in, in the terms of time and when we got them out uh, these were mostly made up of first time calvers and it's great to get them out to, to relieve the pressure on the shed space and also reduce the risk of any scour outbreaks in the sheds we had we had a bit of planning done last October, whereas we had shelter paddocks closed off um, from mid October, and it was good cover of grass on these paddocks. And um, we generally we generally put them out in groups of seven and seven or eight. These groups of cows just to minimise any chance of damage. And we, the main thing is we didn't want to return these cows and calves to the shed. So the smaller groups we had, they were they were very easy managed. And, and uh, the remaining cows and calves then went out in mid-March after they'd been vaccinated and dehorned. That's great, Michael. A really busy calving season, as you mentioned, 89 cows calving in such a short period of time. With calving season just ended there on the 22nd of April, its breeding season is just around the corner. What's your plan for the breeding season ahead? Yeah, so we got to finish on the 22nd, so that'll leave us a week or 10 days just to, to gear up um, for, for the breeding season. So we're starting the breeding season on the 3rd of May. So this week coming now, we'll be uh, tail, we'll be bringing in the cows, um, we'll be, there'll be body condition scored and weighed, um, we'll be clipping all their tails and tail painting all the cows. And uh, also the calves this week will be getting their their booster shot for the clostridial diseases. Uh, we'll also be filling the, the teaser, the teasers chin balls with 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 paint and putting the teasers out with the cows maybe one or two days ahead of the breeding season. This is just to let the teasers adjust to the cows and then when we start um, start the breeding season that we won't be picking up false heats with an excited teaser. Um, so the cows, as I was saying, are overall in good body condition score, a good condition. And on a daily basis, we see a lot of cows, cows are cycling. Um, we'll, be can, we'll be carrying out a pre-breeding scan this week is also. Uh, we find that works very well on the herd and uh, it just lets us know any cows that are not cycling and which might need to be maybe cleaned out. Um, let's say in particularly last year, we had four cows that this scan picked up that weren't cycling. And we put them on a synchronization program. And three of these cows were some of the first cows to calve um, in the last year. So or this year, I should say. So, so the likes of them cows potentially went from being at the very end of the calving season to the very start of the season. So the, breed, the pre-breeding scan works, works quite well for us. They're quite happy with that. That's great, Michael. And the fact you're using 100% AI, the heat detection aids that you mentioned there, can you talk through how you top up and change colour, etc., of the tail paint during the breeding season? Yeah, so maybe every maybe 10 days, we'll um, we'll take in the cows and uh, re-top up their tail paint. Um, we start with we start with 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 yellow. Um, all cows start with the yellow the yellow colour, and once they're served, we'll we'll change it to blue. So as I was saying, they were topped up every maybe week or 10 days. Once we've maybe, like the cows will be in groups of 25 to 30. And we'll say if we win some morning and there's three or four cows bowling in the group, we'll bring the whole group in and just top up the tail paint. Yeah, so we're, 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 that's, that's, that's part of, that's what we'll be doing throughout the, throughout the summer there, yeah. And what sires are you using this year? So this year, there's, there's going to be, a, we're starting a new trial um, comparing Angus versus Charlie Bulls. 
Um, so first, first of all, we'll be selecting easy calving bulls, um, less than 8% calving difficulty within breeds um, with a corresponding good reliability. Good reliability is very important to us there. Um, and so we'll, be, we'll, so we'll be trying something new this year also within the breeds. We are selecting bulls with a good fleshing ability which corresponds to a high carcass fatness PTA. And if, if, and we're going to try and see if this determined helps to draft animals to be slaughtered at an earlier stage. So all the bulls that will be used will be four star or greater on the, within the terminal index for, for each breed. So some of the bulls, so there'll be a, in total, there'll be 10 bulls used, five Charlies and five Angus. So just to name some of the Charlie bulls that maybe widely, maybe might be known or say is it Gold Star Ludwig, he's a Charlie bull, CH4251. Um, another bull is Polaray pa, pa, Mark, CH4160. Um, and then on the Angus side, um, we're using a bull called Bunlahi John, BJG, um, and then and GJB is also another bull, Gould and Jumbo King, and all and on the heifers we'll be using a Gabriel Pat A four six three one and A four zero eight nine. So they're just some of the bulls that be used this year on the in the breeding season ahead. You have a very few busy weeks ahead, Michael. What's the grass situation on the farm at the moment? Going on grass. Last week's figures, um, we grew an average of thirty six kilos of dry matter per hectare. But we have uh, demand an, a lot, a lot higher than that. We've demanded 62. So, but this we have to do just to conduct our. We do the we have to do our grass walk this week. We do expected it to be a bit higher than that. Um. So at the minute we have an average farm cover of 825 kilos of dry matter per hectare, and obviously we'd be hoping that the the grass growth will kick on there now in the coming days, coming weeks. Um. Because we can't, we won't be able to justify the 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 big difference in. In, in supply and demand and um, potentially if it does if the grass doesn't if the growth doesn't increase we might have to uh, maybe pull back one or two silage paddocks but that'd be that worst case scenario and um, so we'll, we'll say in 40 percent of the farm got two and a half thousand gallons of slurry in late january uh, when ground conditions permitted then we went out in march and we um, blanket spread the farm with a bag of protected urea to the acre and we are currently following we're following, following each um, grazing with a half bag of urea to the acre. Michael, you mentioned there that you've closed for silage. What was your plan when you closed for silage? So we grazed the silage ground off. Um, it was all grazed off this spring. We had a, quite a high demand. A lot of cattle got out early. Um, so we, we, fin we closed up, uh, we grazed out all the silage ground this spring and closed it up there. And the last of the silage ground was closed up in the first week of March. Then we applied 96 units of protected urea to the silage ground. And it also received two and a half thousand gallons of slurry applied with a dribble bar. And when do you plan to harvest the silage? Um, we'd be hoping to, to, to harvest it towards the end, end of May, um, weather permitting. And hopefully if, the, if we've good grass growth, yeah, to hoping to achieve towards middle to the end of May. Michael, with the price of nitrogen at the moment, what's your grass plan for the weeks ahead? So as part of the, the new grassland research on the farm, we were stitching in two and a half kilos of clover, uh, white clover per, per acre on a selected paddock throughout April and May. Um, before stitching in these paddocks, they were grazed out tightly and then they'll be stitched in with an iron box. After this, then the paddocks then will be rolled and receive watery slurry. A watery slurry will be applied to them, and um, this being carried out by the by the new grassland researcher here in Chagas Grange, Peter Doyle. And um, this these fields then be will be stitched in. Will, these fields that will, are being stitched in will not receive any fertilizer for the next for the next rota few rotations, and um, to prevent the the grass from smothering the clover. And um, this these paddocks will also they'll be grazed at 800 kilos of dry matter per hectare. Um, for the next few few rotations, um, simple reason is to stop, as I say, stop the grass from smothering the clover. We are also uh, receding fields with red clover um, in the next few weeks. This area will be used as silage ground in the future. The aim is to, to apply no chemical nitrogen to these areas going forward, um, and just it'll just receive the 0730 and high and, and slurry as it requires a high demand for, as a high, has a high demand for potassium. Can you give an update on how last year's cattle performed? Last year, quite happy with how last year's animals performed. The beef, uh, the beef heifers and bullocks, um, after achieving a kilo of average daily gain of grass, they were housed in mid-September. Uh, we'll say all the heifers and 
um, half the bullocks were housed in mid-September and the remaining bullocks were housed in October. Um, both heifers and bullocks received five kilos of concentrates ad lib and ad lib silage with, se uh, we should say, ad lib 78 DMD silage. Um, so the heifers were all slaughtered at 20 months, 21 months of age with an average carcass weight of 345 kilos. That was in, in December when they were slaughtered. Um, they had an average confirmation of R plus and a fat cover of 3 plus with a kill out percentage of 54.3%. And they averaged 1,608 euro at 21 months of age. And very similar to the steers, the steers were slaughtered at 20, overall were slaughtered at 22 months of age, achieving a carcass of 380 kilos and the confirmation of R plus, 3 plus. And they killed out of 56% at an, at an average of 1,788 euro each at 22 months of age. And based on the new trial that you're starting with the Angus and Charlie bulls that you mentioned earlier, how much earlier do you expect these heifers and steers to be finished compared to those figures? I suppose it's all we'll, we'll have to see to see where, where it takes us, but we'd be hoping to finish them off grass maybe in September, the heifers maybe in September, October, um, before they before any housing, and potentially maybe a month or two, maybe twenty, maybe a month or six weeks earlier with the on the with the bull, on the bullocks. But like that, it's it has all to be yet to be, you know, we'll just see how it goes. It's the beginning of the trial, but we're we're expecting maybe heifers to be gone off grass in September, October, and the steers to be gone in December of, of that year. That's great, Michael. Thanks very much and the very best of luck with the breeding season ahead. Thank you, Catherine. That's all for this week's episode and my thanks to Michael for joining me on the show. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.